Welcome to Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, this one actually slipped through on me here. I, we get up this morning seeing that uh, American television is already reporting that Russian television is warning of a nuclear war. Of course, now we've been seeing all the tensions of nuclear war constantly, been reporting that. Uh, but um, it's actually coming from Russia One. That's actually a television station I don't monitor very often. And uh, and also RIA, uh, which is, uh, let me just show you RIA here, one second here. Uh, this is RIA's website right here. Now we've actually used Google Translate so you can see it in English. And uh, this was done back on October uh, the uh, 11th. Uh, was this uh, this article here, Russian state TV brazen behavior toward Russia may have nuclear consequences. Uh, that's the title of this one here. Also, if you go to, um, uh, I believe it's this one right here. Let me just see. Yes, this one right here. This is the first one that came out on Russian television screens returning uh, war talk. Uh, this one also stating that. Now, the, the serious part about the headlines here are what is what is the trigger point of this all happening and it has to do with Syria it has to do with Russia excuse me uh, the Obama administration's plan B and everything that's going on around the world is clearly being moved into place for a confrontation with Syria and uh, what's really Heading this all off, I think, has been summed up the best here on Sputnik News. Bad news for Washington, Syrian conflict revealing new world order. Uh, so this kind of, I'm just going to kind of brief through all this because we're going to be working all day uh, to get this together and put this to where it makes more sense for you so you can actually see the Russian television side and what they're actually saying. We'll be bringing all that on there for you as well. Let me just do one reminder, though, in the process of this. The only way we can make this news possible to you is because of your support of the work that we do here. We do depend upon your help in making this possible. And yes, we are uh, nearing a situation that could become a global conflict, but we still do need your help in making that possible. IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com both have places you can donate online. And of course, Israel Return carries our, our, our mailing address as well at the end of this video. Thank you for your support and God bless you for that. Uh, back into this here though, I want to quickly look at what Russia is saying here. They said the post-Cold World <coughs> order is coming apart at the seams with limited number of countries no longer able to act according to their own interests while disregarding international moral code and law. Russian anal analysis, analyst, excuse me, uh, Timofey uh, Bordakov wrote for Letna.ru, he says on there. Um, he goes into here, he says, he has clearly returned U.S. to the era of great powers rivalry, he said, adding that NATO members, Gulf monarchies, Russia, Iran, China, have to a different extent been embroiled in this conflict. These countries have split into camps, or Bordakov called them support teams. Uh, Duja uh, Russia, Russia China, Russia, China, and Iran are not fighting for Syria against the United States and their allies in Europe and the Gulf, he observed, but a proxy war between them is going on. The Syrian crisis probably offered a glimpse of what's to come in, in the fall of, of 2013 when Russia's vigorous diplomatic efforts prevented the U.S. and its allies from launching a military campaign against Damascus. This, according to the analyst, was something that no one could have possibly imagined after the end of the Cold War. But it did. And this is where the big problem is right now uh, that we're seeing is that, uh, that, that, that Russia uh, is standing up to the West and, and trying to fight for President Bashar al-Assad, his right to... to uh, to, to, to have his own right to speak about what he believes, that, you know, that he wants to live in freedom and his people in freedom without the dictates of uh, the Obama administration and this new world order. In fact, what's interesting, if you look at it, Bre uh, BRICS, not Brexit, but BRICS, which was the new economic uh, structure that they were beginning to form, which is between Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, they came together, which was upsetting this new world order. Because even though the U.S. dollar is at the all-time low, 
uh, because of the huge nearly $20 trillion debt that it has and China bearing the brunt of that debt. That's, in fact, that's maybe one reason why China doesn't get, get involved at first with any kind of nuclear exchange because if China gets involved, they're carrying the brunt of American debt. It also brings them down with the West if the West goes down. So Russia may find themselves fighting this war alone unless Iran gets involved. And about the only way I can see Iran would get involved if it's Israel gets involved. And, you know, it's just, ah, it is a mess, an, a mess beyond proportions. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm afraid the Obama administration could really care, li care less about the lives that are in the Middle East, and that is including Israeli lives. Uh, I know he seems to be talking a big speak with Prime Minister Netanyahu now, but as far as the Jewish people, I am afraid that we are just pawns in their game, other than the God of Israel himself looking down and doing something, as he said already in his word, that he would come to Israel's aid when the time is needed. But that'll be when all the nations come against Israel. And they will. There will come a time. And maybe this war here will cause a collapse in Russia where they will end up replacing President Putin. I pray that that doesn't happen because the man is about the only president that seems to have some common sense in recognizing this new world order. Uh, but, and I think this is one reason why Russia is actually uh, coming out now and putting out titles like this on your screen and behind you here is because they're trying to get, uh, especially so many Americans knowing that uh, new world order is evil and Russia now is saying bad news for Washington, Syrian conflict revealing the new world order. Putin has said he would fight against it. Uh, even uh, Hungary threw out the Rothschild banks out of their own country. Russia did the same. And they're building, you know, like I said, this, this new economic system which the New World Order will not accept. They want a cashless society. They want to microchip you and all the rest. So out of, uh, out of chaos, they will bring their New World Order microchipping everybody. So when people look at Russia and think, oh, Russia's the big bad evil guy and everything, I don't think it's that way. The only way Russia would become the evil empire is if the United States government, not the American people, but the Obama administration happens to get their man in, the, in, in, in Russia going, and then surely Russia would become an evil empire then when they have a new Jesuit running Russia, as they did with uh, Lenin and uh, Vladimir, uh, excuse me, Vladimir Lenin and Joseph Stalin, who were Jesuits to begin with. Now, uh, also, let me just bring this out to you as well. These are just some of the articles going around Bloomberg uh, reporting right here that uh, war talk returns to Russian TV as U.S. ties hit a deep freeze. Uh, they show the picture there, uh, there in Moscow. Also, another one, WND. Uh, you know, it's almost like they're mocking the Russians for, for trying to warn their citizens of the serious consequences that are happening. And by the way, you know, it's like to do this, oh, no, you know, I mean, my gosh, what is this? You think it's a joke? I mean... It's, it's ridiculous. I guess, you know, when you think you have the upper hand, it's a joke to you. And maybe some of these elitists that run these news organizations, they have the little underground bunkers they're going to get to run to because they've been so good boys for the American pop propaganda machine that they can go do that. Uh, but when it comes to the Russian people, they don't have, they don't support the elite. So Russia has to take care of their own people while the elite system will leave all the rest of the people above ground to suffer the consequences of their actions. Very sad to see this uh, to begin with. And speaking of actions, let me just share with you here. This, this website here carried uh, uh, little clips here of Zaranovsky, Zer uh, some of his comments here. I thought it was rather interesting. Let, let's get to where it is. Okay. And here, he's not afraid to uh, really lamb blast Hillary Clinton and I want you to be able to hear part of this. So I'm going to let a little bit of this play here because he's trying to get the people to recognize that if you don't vote for Trump, you're definitely going to vote for war. Listen to what he has to say here. And this is the man that I covered the other day that I shared with you uh, that he was saying that, you know, a vote for Hillary is a vote for war. This is the man. But the head of the state shouldn't keep... Why it relates only to the USA. One second, guys. Hang on. Uh, let me turn down the volume because he'll start shouting like I do. 
but I want you to be able to know what he says, all right? So let's, let's back it up here. Uh, they didn't want to delve into the, to, to Clinton's health. We are sorry for her, they say. And, and I am as well. I, you know, I, I know everybody's probably saying, <clears throat> Steve, she's done all this evil. She's done all this wicked. Every soul has a right to repent. So let's pray she would repent. I, I want to be a little bit optimistic here. But watch what he says here. He says, uh, maybe she'll get well soon. That's what the other guy says. It's a really delicate subject. She says, we aren't gloating over this. He, then Zanofsky says, but the head of the state shouldn't keep <clears throat> why it relates only to the USA and Russia. Why it relates only to the USA and Russia, her health is a secret. Let it be some other small country we don't even know. What is going on there? But the nuclear superpower claiming to be one of the two great states shouldn't have a sick president. And what if she needs to decide whether to drop bombs or not and has a convulsion at the moment? <clears throat> And then we'll, we'll fall down and faint. What would happen to the world? Oh, God, this is not funny. This is about the U.S. button. This pneumonia is coexisting disease. The diagnosis is far more scary. We are not going to delve into that. Clinton means to pass backwards. She would, uh, would, would avenge for her husband not, not, for not being chosen as a candidate eight years ago. Olga says, let us not make diagnosis to anyone. Okay, but he says, but we see that it would be a feast, either for Trump or America or the whole world. He says, I mean that Trump would win. All right, they can, they can nominate any other candidate, a healthy one. We are not talking about the disease of some, some of the candidates. I'm saying that Trump's victory would be a feast for, hum, for, for mankind. Uh, in other words, he's saying a victory for mankind, okay? That's, that's what he's trying to say. The U.S. presidential nominee, he goes on to say, he gets really excited about it, and he starts shouting, you know, Trump, 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 Americans vote Trump, Trump. <laughs> he's, he's so funny. Uh, he is very flamboyant. He is very much known by the, uh, by the Russians for that. He is a close ally of President Putin, and, uh, and he's the one that if Putin needs to see how the, how the Russians are going to react, they put him out there. And the Russian people are majorly in favor for him as well, just as they are for President Putin. All right, now, let me, let me take you back here real quick. I want to go back, um, like I said, this here, the article on Russian television screens returning to the war. But we also have this here three days ago, this, this one here came out. Uh, and this one, Russian state TV brazen behavior toward Russia may have nuclear consequences. Uh, so, and again, they are citing Russia One, which is the state-ran television, uh, about this. When, so when state-run television is telling you that this could go into a nuclear war, in my opinion, Russia is not saber-rattling to the United States. They're trying to get the American people's attention because Russia knows that the U.S. citizen has the ability to pressure Congress, pressure the Senate, to get them to cause the Obama administration to back off away from war. And this is what they're trying to do. Division U.S. Marines uh, numbering 300 people will be placed. Uh, now, they go into all kinds of things that have been happening uh, around Europe, around Syria. This is what the article goes into. Uh, and we're going to be highlighting some of this later for you today, tonight, this evening, our time, be late, uh, be this afternoon for you time, your time in America. And guys, we have been up practically around the clock here constantly since all this is, all this tension has been building. If you have emailed me or if you've even mailed me by mail, I have, I've literally let things just pile up, uh, especially when it comes to um, the responding to uh, emails. I have like 700 emails. I still have not been able to get to. I apologize for that. It's just we have been trying to monitor this. As you guys see, we've been posting two and three times videos a day, which I don't normally do. And it takes hours and hours to prepare for each broadcast. I'm getting up early in the morning, actually 9 o'clock, which is not really early, but when you have been up to 2 and 3 a.m. and then you're only sleeping five hours, that's what I'm basically averaging a day, is about five hours, sometimes a little bit longer there, trying to stay on top of this because we're kind of like that front defense over here. If we can get the warning to the American people how serious the situation is, then you can take the proper uh, precautions on your end. And we do know that they are, uh, even, uh, I know that uh, um, 
Paul Bagley reported that uh, that in American television they're saying for Americans to look for fallout shelters nearest you as well. That's a joke. Uh, it's not like Russia where Russia has this all over the country and they have been carrying. America just tells you, oh, go look for something. Well, Russia, that shows you the difference between President Putin and President Obama. President Putin cares for his people. He works with them, practices with them, and does the drills to take and get these people into bunkers and prepare for a worst case scenario. Uh, Syria, though, is the major issue. As we reported uh, 2 a.m. this morning in our latest broadcast there, uh, the President of the United States is meeting today about doing using force on Syria. It seems the Pentagon, there has been a lot of news here that's been saying that the Pentagon is running the show now, not the President. They've taken it from his hands. Uh, it's more of a figurehead at this point. But the Pentagon is running the show. They're wanting to use force. They have moved, uh, they have been moving uh, to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's two aircraft carriers in the region there for a confrontation with Syria. Uh, this is very serious for Russia. It reminds me of the biblical passage in Daniel where it says there is sorrow on the seas. And that's because of all these ships in the, in the arena here. Russia doesn't have the ability to defend Syria in a, with a full onslaught such as this. And um, I know that they can do a fairly good job in defending, but this is really going to bring in a, a massive, massive war in the region. Uh, we know that when the United States, when they go in, like in the case of Iraq, the United States uses an overwhelming amount of military power to take out targets as rapidly as they can. There has been some talk on this in here that Russia may do a first strike for preservation, because if um, if the if NATO does a first launch themselves, uh, Russia would be caught off guard. Then they could take and do tremendous damage to Russia as well. Uh, now, it also, from what I can see, when I was listening to uh, uh, Mr. Toner, uh, Mark Toner, last night, the the State Department uh, spokesperson for the U.S. State Department, um, he mentioned the way the way he worded his statement there seemed to indicate that. They're going to go after Syria, the President Bashar al-Assad, and kind of hope that Russia doesn't get involved. But I think that they know too well that if you go after him, you're going to go after Russia as well because Russia is too embedded with the Syrian government there. Uh, very sad, very sad. And, and, and my heart for my American brothers and sisters really goes out. I, I have been... Uh, encouraging people in America privately already, you know, look, especially since we don't, you know, who, who knows who's got bunkers and doesn't have bunkers. There are places all over America, different areas that seem to me, from what I can tell, seem to be safe areas. Uh, like, for example, if you live in uh, northern Florida, uh, Georgia areas, stuff like that, Tifton, Georgia, uh, actually are, are a little south of Tifton. It's kind of like a little dead zone area where there is no, no targets that would be of an interest. Um, you have all, all, all different, especially out in the, the Midwest there, there's a lot of places there that are safe. There are online, if you look up the maps online, and, and maybe we'll do that in our broadcast this evening here, I'll take the map, I'll start showing you from what we can see, areas that would be considered safe. Uh, you know, depending on where you live at in the world. We want you to be aware of at least zones that seem to be uh, away from nuclear attack. Um, and we also, I think of uh, Nathan, I cannot help but remember Nathan, his near-death experience, and he says that there would be a war that would begin in Syria. It would be a conflict between the United States and Syria, and he said it would develop into a nuclear exchange that would last for about two weeks, and he said millions will die. Um, it is very sad to hear that, but he said millions will die. And uh, so we are praying for the people, the believers around the world, the humanitarian, because hum it'll be a humanitarian crisis. Uh, but we're praying for all of you. And, and again, this could be averted. If we ever look at the prophecies, uh, even like Damascus, I know Damascus will be a ruinous heap. The prophets have spoken it. They've said it's going to happen. That's going to happen because of this whole exchange. Even if Bashar al-Assad is not toppled, it still will happen. Uh, but there are many prophecies. We look at Nineveh, 
where the prophet Jonah was commanded to go tell them, repent or else. Uh, we look at uh, Hezekiah turning his face to the wall and crying out to God, I need 15 more years to get my house in order. And the prophet Elijah, after he pronounced his death, returns back and tells him, It'll, it, the, okay, God has heard your cries. It'll change. Uh, God was going to pronounce even on Ahab, uh, bring about the, the judgment upon him, but he repented in sackcloth and ashes and God had mercy. That's what the world needs today. They need a soul searching uh, from the very top all the way down to the janitor. There needs to be a soul searching and a repentance of the people uh, in order to avert this type of disaster. And I also think that uh, Clinton, no doubt, may be pushing Obama's strings, uh, especially since they have more connections in the war room, so to speak, uh, to get a war going to, to prevent Donald Trump from getting into office. And I do know we speak of the lesser two evils. Uh, I, I can't say 100% that I'm behind Donald Trump, but then again, if I see someone that is trying to make peace with Russia, that is a better, better than nothing. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News.